I'm Vanessa. And I'm Jason. And today we're going to be teaching you how to play the game Six Toes. Six Toes designed by Stefan and Florian Bendorf. It plays one to six players and takes around 15 minutes to play. Let's get going and learn how to play. Six Toes is the latest roll and write game from Stefan and Florian Bendorf. In Six Toes, players are trying to cross off as many numbers as possible in each of the rows and columns because a lone cross in any one row or column will result in negative points. This fun, colourful game is super quick to set up and super quick to teach and play, so let's not waste any time and dive right in. To set up, give each player a pencil and a score sheet. You will notice at the bottom of each score sheet there is a small letter. There are 12 different score sheets with front and back sides. Make sure that everybody is using a different sheet. Finally, randomly determine a player to start the game and give all 6 dice to this player. This player will be the first active player. With the setup done, now the game can begin. In each turn, the active player rolls all six dice. So let's say I roll this here. They can decide to stick with this initial roll or choose to re-roll all six dice one more time, hoping for a better result. The active player cannot choose to selectively re-roll certain dice. If they choose to re-roll the initial roll, then all the dice must be rolled again. So here, I'm not so happy with my roll. I'll take all the dice and roll them again. But whatever I roll, I have to stick with now. So here is my new roll for the turn. Once the active player has finished rolling the dice, that will determine the numbers that everyone can use to cross off spaces on their individual score sheets. As you can see, each row has a matching colored die. So we have a purple here for this purple row. Everyone may use all six dice to cross off matching numbers in the corresponding colored rows, starting from left to right. In the best possible case, all six dice can be used. That is one cross per row. I recommend organizing the dice in a rainbow color, just like that seen on the score sheet to help everybody see what numbers are being rolled. So we have purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. This makes it a lot easier to evaluate the dice along with the rows. Numbers must be crossed off from left to right in each row. You can skip as many numbers as you wish, but you will not be able to cross off any skip numbers later on. We suggest drawing the line through any skip boxes to visually keep things clear. So in this case, with the purple three, that's pretty good, it's the very first number. Then the five also is very good. We have to skip the one here for green, going to this five. The four, maybe I might not cross this one yet, I want to try and roll a six or a three later. The one on orange is really far along this row, so I don't want to cross this one. And then the six here, I'm happy to skip this number too. So here I'll just draw a line through this number and this number to show that I can't cross this off again. Unlike many other roll and write games, no one is under any obligation to cross off spaces on each turn. You can decide to cross off as many numbers as you want, of course up to six, or you can choose to cross nothing off if you wish. There is no penalty for passing for the turn. Once everyone has crossed off as many numbers as they want or are able to, then the next player in clockwise order takes hold of all six dice and becomes the new active player, starting a new turn. Once again, they will roll all the dice, choosing to keep the result or re-roll just once, and then everyone at the table will get a chance to cross off numbers once again. Play will continue like this until the end of the game is triggered, which we will describe a little later in this tutorial. Looking closely now at the score sheet, you can see that the last three numbers in each row are separated from the rest. This is known as the target area. These numbers can only be crossed off if you have made a minimum of four crosses in the row before the target area. Let's look at an example. This is my current score sheet. These are the dice that have been rolled for this turn. If I want to use the number six in purple, you will see I have made one, two, three, four crosses. So now I can use the target area. So I will use the dice here and cross these off. If any player crosses off the final number in a row, they cannot cross off any more boxes of that color. You can see here, I can now no longer use the red dice. This target area is very important because as soon as a player has crossed off two boxes in the target area of a row, this color is then closed for all players. No players may then cross off any more numbers in this colored row. The matching color die is removed from the game and will no longer be rolled at the start of any future turn. If a player wants to complete a row like this, they must announce so beforehand, so that the other players at the table have a final opportunity to cross off a number in that row if they are able. So for example here, I can use this yellow five and cross this number off. 
This dice is now locked and is taken out of the game. The game will end after the turn in which at least the third dice has been removed from the game. Alternatively, the game will end if any player has crossed the final number in each of the six rows here and is unable to cross off any more numbers at all. At this point, it is time to determine everyone's scores. As we said, the goal here is to cross off as many spaces in each row and column as possible. You can see at the bottom of the score sheet, there is a table showing how many points you will score for each row and column at the end of the game, depending on how many crosses you make in each. For example, if you make five crosses in any row or column, you will score 15 points. Everyone must be careful, however, because if at the end of the game you only have a single number crossed off in any row or column, you will score minus five points for it. Any rows and columns without any crosses are skipped when scoring. The target area columns are also skipped when evaluating the scores. Let's take a look at this score sheet and work out the final score for this player together. First, we'll concentrate on the columns. As you can see here, when we go down this column, we have two crosses, which gives us zero points. This one here, we've made one, two, three crosses, giving us five points. In other rows, for example here, we only have one cross, one cross and one cross, all giving us minus five points. We didn't score very well here. We add up this total and that goes into this box here. Next, let's look at the rows. In this row, in purple, I've made one, two, three, four, five crosses, which gives me 15 points. You add up the tally here, and in the end of this game, I have come to a total of 33 points. Once everyone has determined their points for each row and column, add up all the points for your final score. The player with the most points will be the winner. In the event of a tie, the player with the most crossed off spaces wins. And that's how you play Sixto. We hope you have loads of fun playing. See you again. Bye. Bye.